Police believe the Somali immigrant who attacked pedestrians at Ohio State University was inspired by ISIS. Abdul Razak Ali Artan made reference to ISIS-styled attacks in a Facebook post Monday. He also talked about Anwar al-Awlaki, the American-born leader of al-Qaeda in Yemen, who was killed in 2011. Investigators say there is no indication Artan had direct communication with ISIS. He rammed a car into a crowd of people at Ohio State yesterday, then got out and started slashing victims with a knife. Eleven people were injured before Artan was shot and killed by a campus police officer. One of the victims, an OSU professor, described being hit by the car. As it was stopping, it clipped in the back of my right leg and uh, basically flipped me up in the air. Artan and his family came to Dallas for about three weeks as refugees before resettling in Ohio. The attack and the Texas connection have fueled a new push to withdraw Texas from the refugee resettlement program. Fox Wars' Laurie Brown talked to a state senator who is moving in that direction. Clarice, State Senator Don Huffins wants to make it the law that Texas will no longer help refugees resettle here in Texas. I mean, it's just a blessing. It's just pure luck. He didn't commit his terrorist attack while he was here in Dallas. Senator Don Huffine says the Ohio state attack is another reason Texas should not be participating in the federal program that helps pay for refugees' living expenses as they get established in the U.S. His bill would create a state law to back the governor's resolution pulling out of the refugee resettlement program. I certainly don't want to get the phone call. Uh, from the police or the FBI that my wife or my kiddos are laying in the morgue or laying in the hospital as a victim of a terrorist attack. And, and neither does anyone else. Records show that Abdul Razak Ali Artan came to Dallas in 2014 with his mother and six siblings. They were only here for about 23 days before moving to Ohio. The agency that helped them, Catholic Charities of Dallas, told us today it has been contacted by law enforcement and intends to assist in their investigation. Two months ago, Governor Greg Abbott had already moved to withdraw Texas from the program effective January 31st next year. The, the probabilities are, or at least the predictability is, that, that when refugees come in from terrorist-based nations, there's a higher probability something like this could happen. The federal government has argued the screening process for refugees is extensive, and despite the governor's declaration, Texas will likely still continue receiving refugees. Dallas County Judge Clay Jenkins says Texas should not turn its back on the very families trying to flee terrorism. The vast majority of the people that come here to America from war-torn countries are women and children uh, fleeing violence and the possibility of death, and it's an American value that when our country uh, processes their papers and allows them in, that we uh, are a welcoming community for them. If Huffine's bill becomes law, it would not stop refugees from living in Texas, but it would stop Texas from receiving federal money to help refugees once they get here. Clarice? So, Laurie, why is the state senator proposing the bill when the governor's already withdrawn the state from the program? Well, the state, state senator said that he is proposing the bill to make what the governor has already done permanent. So if a future governor wanted to start participating in the refugee resettlement program, he or she would then have to change the law themselves. Clarice. Laurie, thank you.